my name is Summer and I'll be your interviewer today. You'll have approximately 20 minutes for this problem. So let me paste the problem statement real fast. And it's given a pile of wood blocks of varying lengths. What's the longest cut length M that can produce at least K M blocks? All right. Um, I'm going to try and figure out what this means first. Okay, so first I open up drawing mode. I'm going to just redraw the example. So 15, 10, 7 with a K of 8. Okay, so I do have a few clarifying questions. So what is the range of K that we can be given? 1 to a large number. 1 to a large number. Okay, uh, So, but also this is the number of minimum blocks of wood we need to produce. Okay, makes sense. What about the wood block lengths themselves, like the 15, 10, 7? What's the range of that? Also one to a large number. Okay, and so just tell myself so I understand. So 15 is a wood block that's length 15, 10, 7. Okay, um, I have one more question. How many wood blocks can we be given? So the length of the array. At least one, but you can assume a large upper bound. Okay, gotcha. So in this array, obviously, we're given three pieces of wood. Um, honestly, I'll probably have more questions as we go, but regurgitating the problem requirements, I need to figure out the longest cut length. So that's M. Let's just label that quick length. The cut length. Not legible, but the cut length of M where we produce at least, the, we want the highest cut length possible, positive integer, that produces at least, so equal or greater, uh, eight blocks in this K, in this case of K. So just walking through an example, what if we had an M of one? Well, we iterate through this array. If you have, first off, a block of wood that's length 15, and you cut it up into ones, you obviously get 15 blocks. So that's 15 with a 10, it's 10, it's a one to one. So that is seven. If you add all those up, you get 32 which is indeed equal or greater than eight. So this is a possible answer. So maybe I have like a res for results. So it's one so far, the longest, the biggest M we can have is one, but let's try another, let's try two. So two, uh, you can split a log of 15 and a half. So you have 7.5. I do have a question. So can we have um, a, block of 7.5 like that makes no sense right we, we have we have to round down yeah you can assume that okay cool so without that you just have the seven you know then you have five two goes to seven three times then if you add those up you get 15 which is still greater or equal to our k blocks of eight so this is also a potential answer we choose it over the one because it's just bigger in nature we want the longest cut length so res is equal to two. great so i that's i am getting the gist of it let's do one more example so maybe let's do a really high number like 20. no let's do something like 15. because that if I think about it, that is the longest cut length you could possibly have, at least in this example, right? It's the max element. So that makes sense to me. So if we have an M of 15, you get obviously the one cut, you get zero from 10 or seven, 15 is greater. And if you add those up, you get one. So that is obviously not enough. That's lower than K. So we don't update res to 15 at all. And so that's interesting. I think 15, uh, the max element of the array or uh, you know, anything above that, like if you have 100 or 16 or whatever, you would never produce enough K blocks at all. You'd have too great of an M. So if you have 100, yeah, you get zero, 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 added up to zero, you have no chances at all. That makes, so in a way, okay, so 15 is like the upper bound to me that you can possibly have. So the lower bound would be, well, that's easy, that's one, or is it? What if you have an M of zero? That makes no sense because you can't have a cut length of zero. You get zero from everything and you get zero. Okay, so we, that's not it. So the lower bound starts at one then, which makes a lot of sense to me. Um, let's try two more examples just so 
we can figure out the answer to this example. So even m of three, then you get five, three, two, add them up, you get 10. Okay, that still qualifies. So you get a res of three, let's try four, which in which you get three, two from 10, and then four goes in seven one time. Otherwise you go overboard, you add these up, you get six. Okay, so this is, okay, so this to me is like the breaking point. Six is lower than eight. Anything beyond four, you know, you won't produce enough blocks. So the answer in this case would be three. Got it. Okay. So to optimize this, I can just, so first off, we'd loop from one all the way to 15 and on each M you iterate through the array and you will do some math to produce the number of blocks you produce. If it's greater or equal to, to K, you update your answer. But to optimize, you can break the keyword break um, when you get to an M that is that produces blocks lower than the eight. So that's an optimization. The overall time complexity, what would that be? So you do have to iterate at, in the worst case, the longest cut length of M, right? Which is again, is the max element in your array, the longest wood, that's 15. So let's just call it max, because M is just an, a variable already, times it'd be N, where N is the number of elements in your array, because for each of these, you have to iterate through the array. And now that I'm saying that, this is not very optimal at all. Because what if you had like, instead of 15, you had 400, you had to iterate that many times. And then if you have a long array, a large number, like we said, then you'd have to iterate a lot. That's not very efficient. Can I do better? Yes, I can. I think, I think, okay, so what I mentioned before was we have an upper bound of the 15, again, max element, and then the lower bound of, it's just hard code at one. Everything in between this is sorted. So that's literally a great application for some in like binary search, where you're both upper bound, lower bound. Um, we can find the, you know, the optimal cut length a lot faster because there is a pattern to this that when I was trying an M of one, two, uh, one or two or whatever, then we found that it produced a lot of wood blocks greater than K, that's great, but it wasn't the longest length possible. So we try a longer one, say 15 or four. Inversely, if we tried 100 or 15, something that's too high or four, it's a positive large M, but it doesn't produce enough wood blocks. It's lower than K in all those instances. We try something smaller, like the three, and that is the great balance. Three would be your answer, and that's what we ultimately return. So I would go through the same math solution with each of these M's and iterate through the array to calculate the number of wood blocks, but I would use binary search to find M instead of iterating from one all the way to potentially 15 in the worst case. So I'm gonna scroll down in the drawing mode real quick. This is not gonna be very official, but to demonstrate that if you have one, two, three, four, you have a bunch of numbers in between, I don't know, all the way to 15, you can use a binary search left to the one, right pointer to the 15. On the first iteration, you get middle, or quite literally M to be on eight. So you do the math with eight, and you find that eight doesn't produce enough wood blocks, you know, it's less than eight. So you go to the lower M cuts. So you can modify R to seven, uh, one plus seven to find the middle is four. So you get four, you, we did that calculation right here. It's still too little, you have six. So you go to the left once again, I'm running out of room. You know, then you try two, right? And you see that's too little. You go to the right. Okay, so anyway, I'm not going to complete this. I'll do a dry run later, but I do like that a lot better because the time complexity would now be improved to, you know, n I believe n log of max in that order, log max because we're doing the binary search on the log. If you had a wood block that was like not 15 but a million on the first iteration, you'd forego you know potentially 500,000 candidates. So that's pretty efficient. The space complexity, I'm convinced is big O1 because we only use pointers, you know, for binary search, for example, not much else. So I, I like that idea. I think I have enough of a basis, scroll up, to potentially code this out. May I try to decipher this into code? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, cool. So let's call this something like find 
longest cut sure and it takes in two things it was the list of elements so that's called that wood list of integers and then we have a k and that's also an integer it will return not a float but the most positive m value uh, that's possible don't forget a colon so after this we need our left and right pointers for the binary search left and right the left one like i said is going to be initialized to one hard coded the right will be um the lot the most the max element in the wood list which is we can use it in built max function max wood i think that's i think that's it the last variable we need is result res for result i don't know what to auto initialize this to maybe it's zero initialize i think it's guaranteed to be overwritten i'll do another test case and dry run after to verify let's return it for i forget no semicolon this is not um c plus plus now we need the while loop for the binary search that we keep going so long as the left pointer is lower or equal to the right pointer because if they're equal we still want to go uh, that m uh, of interest might be the answer so let's calculate m which is going to be right minus left this is to find the middle integer division by two that's at left that will find the balance potentially m so here we want to say if oh maybe we need a helper function for this to iterate over the array and find how many pieces of wood that you could chop up. So let's call it like num blocks. I take in wood uh, and I'll take in literally m and we'll return an integer for us. Um, so what we're going to do is let's have a count variable to zero. Let's return it before I forget. And then we have a for loop over each wood piece. And for each, we're going to add to the count of essentially the length like 15 divided by integer division because we want to round down by m which is the length cut length that we're trying to try out to see if we get a larger number now we can continue that if statement that if we call our function if num blocks of wood and the m that we are trying is greater or equal to k you're right then we want to do two things we want to update res to m that new value and then move and then try a longer cut because if it worked out we produce enough wood blocks let's try another one be greedy like that so left will be m plus one to move to the right otherwise inversely we'll move to the left with the right pointer so i actually like that now i i do want to try that test case that i was talking about um i'm more wondering if my code i'm scrolling down and then if you had a K of say two, sure, why not? And the res is obviously auto defaulted to zero. Let's initialize our numbers for visual reference. Okay, so walking through this, of course, we're gonna find M. Line 18 says you initialize the pointers like so. Uh, initialize res on line 19. We go into the while loop on line 20. After that, line 21 says mid will be at three. So you're gonna try that out. Line 22 executes our helper function, iterates through this guy, m of three, what happens? You get one wood block, which is less than two. Uh, that's not great. So line 26 says you modify m to be, or right to be m minus one. So r goes here, left remains the same. You're gonna try an m of one on line 21. So what does that produce us? That gives us five, that's way more than a k of two. So line 23 gets hit where res is updated to one, great. You want to go to the left to try it longer, you know, bigger M cut lengths. So line, line 24 says left is going to be at the two now. That's where the R is, thus that's where the M is. Calculate it by line 21. Line 22 will go over the array once again with an M of two, and that will produce two that works. So line 23 gets updated, res to two, left will now be at three it crosses the r and we stop our binary search line 27 will return res of two as our answer that does work out awesome okay there we go i i think that's it awesome thank you for that do you have any questions for me yes i do um yeah how's it like working at minmer headquarters i i hear the work-life balance is pretty great I wish you luck on your interviews. And if you learned something today, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.